Greetings, folks. Welcome. Regression analysis is a very useful tool that helps economists examine the relationship between variables. We often use regression analysis to tell us the types of factors that might impact something else. We can apply regression analysis to the study of households, businesses, countries, pretty much anything. When we do regression analysis, we'll typically start from a population regression model. We can write out a population regression model as y equals beta subscript 0 plus beta subscript 1 times x plus epsilon. This population regression model is a statement of how we think the world works. So in this case, we think the variable that's represented by x has an effect on y. But we also know that there are lots and lots of other things that might have an influence on y, which is why we insert this error term labeled as epsilon. Since we almost never have information on an entire population, we instead estimate a regression model based on a sample of data. So a sample regression model is y equals b subscript 0 hat plus b subscript 1 hat times x. A main objective of regression analysis is to uncover the relationship between the dependent variable, which we represent by y, and the explanatory variable, which we indicate by x. But it's also important to consider the overall performance of the regression model. For this, we use a statistic which is called r squared, or the coefficient of determination. So this r squared is a measure of overall model performance. The coefficient of determination, also known as r squared, is based on the premise that there's variation in y, or the dependent variable. So let's say in this figure y represents income. I put in a label of y bar which is the average income in this sample, just to give you an idea that there are some people that earn more than average, and there are some people that have incomes that are less than average. Some make a little and some make a lot. So says J. Lo Jenny from the block. The R squared is also based on the premise that the regression model does not perfectly predict every value of Y. In this figure, you see an example of a residual. That's the difference between the actual value for the dependent variable, or actual value for Y, and the amount that would be predicted based on the regression model. So you see on the line, there's a point that's labeled as yi hat. This is a value that would be predicted based on the regression analysis, whereas y subscript i is the actual value for the dependent variable. And again, this difference is what we call a residual. To give you an idea of what the r squared represents, this formula shows how it's constructed. On the left-hand side of the formula, you see what's called the total sum of squares, and this gives you an idea of the variation in the dependent variable. So you see yi minus y bar, so that's the difference between the value of y for an observation and the mean value, and then you square that difference and you sum it for every observation in the data set. So again, this just gives you a sense of how much variation there is in the dependent variable. And that's equal to what's called the sum of the squared errors plus the sum of the squares regression. And the sum of the squared errors, you just got an idea of what that looks like in the last slide, because the sum of the squared errors is yi minus yi hat, whereas the yi hat is the value that's predicted by the regression model. So this yi minus yi hat is simply the residual. So you take the residual for every observation, you square them, and you sum them up. And again, that's the sum of the squared errors. And the final piece, the sum of the squared regression, is calculated as the estimated value on the regression line. That's yi hat minus y bar, which is the mean value for the dependent variable. And you square that. And again, you sum that up for all the observations. And the r squared is the sum of the squared regression divided by the sum of the squared total. So if you have a regression model where there are very small residuals, you have a high r squared. Whereas if you have a model where there are very, very large residuals, the r squared is low. And this r squared can be interpreted as the percentage of variation in y, which is the dependent variable, that is explained by the regression model. To give you an idea of what this looks like, here's a scatter plot, and I've inserted a regression line. And for this regression, the r squared is about 65%, or it's 0 0.64674. So this means that about two-thirds of the variation in the y variable is explained by the regression model, or the x variable. Here's a scatter plot where all the points are arranged in a straight line. So you see the r squared is 1, or 
This means that all the variation in y, or all the variation in the dependent variable, is explained by the regression model, which has that x variable in the model. Here's a scatter plot where the regression model has an r squared of 0.43592, or about 0.44. This means that 44% of the variation in the dependent variable is explained by the regression model. And here's a scatter plot where the regression model has an r squared of 0.18. And here you see pretty large residuals. In other words, a lot of the points are very far away from the regression line. This is what I meant when I said if you have large residuals, you have a small r squared. Or if you have small residuals, in other words, if all the points are pretty close to the line, you have a much higher r squared. Here's a scatter plot where the regression model explains almost none of the variation in the dependent variable. The r squared is less than 0.01. It's actually 0.00407. So this picture is characterized by very, very large residuals or a very, very large difference between many of the points and the regression line. So this r squared can be interpreted as a measure of sort of the strength of the fit of this regression line, which means that it's similar to the correlation, which we also used earlier to think about the direction and strength of a scatter plot. And as it turns out, if you take the correlation and square it, it actually gives you the r squared. So the correlation between two variables is represented by an r, and then the correlation squared is r squared. This brings us to the most important question I think we've looked at so far in any of these videos, and that is, what's the pirate's favorite part about regression? Well, let's see, r squared.